Welcome back to another edition of the Wolverine.com podcast. This is our TV version. My name is Chris Ballas. With me today, a couple special guests, one regular guest and just a normal guy, Doug Skeen. Then we got Chris Hutchinson. Aiden Hutchinson's dad is how everybody refers to you now, man. But I'll tell you what, back in the day, this guy was a badass defensive lineman. Doug Skeen said he used to throw him around like a rag doll, so I want to hear what Hutch has to say about that in practice. Oh, don't shake your head. No, he didn't really say that, Hutch. But, uh, <laughs> but for, first things first, uh we're brought to you today by Manscaped. The Olympics, Euros, baseball, major championships, concerts are all in the summer. You know what isn't? A, uh, a wild and hairy jungle down there, man. Tame your jungle with help from our friends at Manscaped, the leaders in below-the-waist grooming. Their fourth-generation performance package includes the brand-new Lawnmower 4.0. Uh, it's been fantastic. Uh, if an athlete treats their body like royalty, why not treat your jungle like Olympic gold? Fellows, do right by your balls and join the 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to uh, manscaped.com with the code 20 go blue and skiing. Tracy told me that that's what she wants uh, me to get you for, for Christmas this year. Uh, she said, please. She begged me essentially. So expect a package here, uh, you know, about November, December. So yeah, anyway. I can't wait, Ballas. I'm looking forward to that. It's, it's great stuff. Just looking, I'll be I, just, I just count, I just counting down the days. That's all I There you go. There you go. Exactly. So Hutch, he didn't really say that about you, number one. I got to tell you, uh, when he talked about your battles, uh, do you remember the battles with Skeen like he remembers the battles with you? Because he said it was a bitch blocking you, man, when you get going. And we remember your quickness. Obviously, you weren't the biggest guy, but man, uh, you could get around some people. Oh, it was great. I mean, we had a, you know, a great offensive line the whole, you know, my whole five years there. Uh, actually just saw Greg Skrepnik uh, a couple days ago at a golf outing. That's an extremely large human, uh, yes. and I got engulfed by him repeatedly. Uh, but you know, going against Skeen and Concuso and Everett uh, and Doherty, and I mean, it was it was an awesome experience. Yeah, it really was. And if, for those who didn't know, Hutch is a, a doctor now, and he's on call. So at any moment, we could lose him. So we're going to try to hurry through this man <laughs> and uh, uh, unbelievably successful career. And that's one thing about those teams, man. Every, I remember interviewing guys from the 40s, the teams from the 40s that were on championship teams, and they all became successful doctors, lawyers, businessmen, things like that. Those early 90s teams, man, I've done a lot of Where Are They Now's. I've done one with each of you guys. And uh, the success, it's unbelievable. And I don't think that's an accident. I think that was kind of groomed uh, within the program and, and what you guys learned. Am I right, Skeen? Yeah, well, that was the expectation was we were going to find a way to win when we were in school and playing football. And then we were going to win to this day. And, and when we do have reunions and we do talk to some of the former coaches on occasion, the expectation is we should be winning and leading. And that's what we're all trying to do out here. Yeah, and you guys are doing a great job. Skeen, talk me through uh, blocking Hutch and, and what you remember about going head-to-head -head with him, and how often did that happen? Uh, well, all I remember is a blur with uh, the jersey, the opposite jersey color going by. And the one thing I remember about attempting to block Hutch was the hands. Hutch was among the very best ever at what, what they call dismissing hands. You stick your hands up to try to get on him, and all of a sudden your hands are down at your knees, and he's on your hip, and he's around the corner. So that was the one thing that I always remember. And it's one of the things that Hutch had, had to do because he wasn't, you know, an overly powerful dude, although he made up for it with some pretty impressive strength. But it was the handwork and the technique and the quickness and the tenacity and the effort that never ended. You knew we knew we knew when we lined up in the one on ones and we were, you know, you, you're standing in line. You can look across the line there and see who you're matched up with. And you see that Hutch is coming, and you just kind of go, oh, well, great. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like we, what you said about going up against a big Polynesian guy. You knew that you were, they were going to be relentless, you know, back in the day. Right. So, yeah, yeah, those were good yeah. days, man. I was in school at the time, and uh, and I won five Big Ten championship rings vicariously through you. Hutch, how many do you have? Big Ten Gene and I are in the same class. Yep, there you go. One of 13, man. So where are yours? Skeen sold his to the Gold and Silver Pawn Shop. I don't know if you've seen that show. But uh, you got yours in a safe somewhere, Hutch, or are they on display? Oh, I, I got them in a little shadow box. Uh, they've sort of migrated around the house. Uh, yeah. Most recently, they were in Aiden's room, which is subject to much fodder of me taunting him about, you know, maybe getting one. You know, clearly, he's yeah. not going to get one. So, uh, you know, he's never going to surpass that one. 
Yeah, or maybe we'll see how many covers he makes of the Wolverine. I think you were in, <laughs> you were on three. I think he's made one or two. Exactly. I'm sure he'll be on there again because he's going to be a huge part of this team, and we're going to talk about him in a minute. But Hutch, how big were you when you came to Michigan, and what were your expectations when you came here? Big size wise, oh yeah, boy, size-wise. monster, yeah. six two yeah. two twenty one. Right. That's what everybody <laughs> wants their defensive tackle to weigh. <laughs> were they expecting you to be? Were they expecting you to play defensive tackle when you got here? What That's did they what say? I got as, but I just had my shoulder operated on, and I was only four months post-op, so they actually uh, knew I wasn't going to play. So I got moved to the practice squad and uh, played outside linebacker just to save some of the banging on my shoulder as a young guy and being just post-op. And then, you know, Everett and I sat in front of the microwave eating 10 hot dogs a night, and we both gained 40-plus pounds, and, you know, the rest is history. I want to know your best Everett story, because I've heard many from Skeen on the record Everett story, not one that you one that you can <laughs> say. I know, you're going to have to think about this one, because uh, I remember uh, I've heard so many from Skeen that we can't talk about that, God, they're just hilarious. So do you, what's your best memory of that guy? Um. Wow. Yeah. Not X R rated NC seventeen. I know it. <laughs> um uh probably being out to lunch and this was after he broke his jaw and yeah. he's working on his jaw. You can see his tongue move around and he's doing this, and next thing you know, he's like spits out a screw from the plates in his jaw. And you're like, dude, that's not supposed to come out. He's like, oh, I don't know. I just sort of blew it off. And I'm like, dude, you got to tell the trainers or something. Yeah. Those screws are not un- meant to back themselves out and fall out while you're eating. <laughs> He's unbelievable, man. We're going to get him on one of these two skiing if uh, if you think it's uh, it's safe, I guess we'll put it. So, uh, yeah, that's great stuff. So, um, Hutch, when did you know uh, with Aiden? And I know that you and Skeen talked about him when he was being recruited. And, hey, is he a Michigan caliber recruit? Well, God, we know now for a fact that this guy is uh, – he's going to be probably – could be a first, second-round pick next year if all goes well and if all goes according to plan. But when did you see it in him that he had the drive – because he certainly has a lot of your characteristics when it comes to caring, when it comes to relentlessness, and uh, really caring about this program. Well, it was sort of an interesting process for him because we didn't hold him back like a lot of parents do now. Because even on the team right now, there's guys that are two classes behind Aiden that are 10, 11 months younger than him. So, right. you know, he, Aiden was young for his age in his class and didn't get held back. So, from a maturity standpoint, from his body, you know, develop into some of these, you know, what you see of these, some of these guys coming out, he wasn't there yet. As a freshman in high school, he was six foot one, 155 pounds. Yeah. And it took him a bit to get his, you know, seven inch uh, or six inch, uh, 70 pound uh, weight gain. And, you know, he started getting some love after his freshman year, sophomore year, after his sophomore year, the, the you know, it, it was, it was a challenge because, People were saying things, and I'm like, I don't know. I hadn't really paid much attention. I hadn't been on Huddle and seen all these other kids. But I started watching the the film of the kids that were already ranked. And you could see these five-star kids. You know, they were, who knows, they were probably already 22 at the time. Uh, but they really stood out. Then you got to these four-star kids, and you're like, I don't know. This film looks pretty similar to Aiden's. I don't know the, why this is any different. And then that's when it started to come – you know, I talked to Skeen, I talked to Kurt Mallory, and we just started, you know, getting different resources. And they're like, you know, a lot of this is potential. And they see this kid's frame. And, you know, clearly right now he's not ready to play. And so mm-hmm. you know, he, he gets an early offer. And, you know, I'm realistic and saying, you know, he gets an early offer. His first offer comes from LSU. And I'm like, Aiden, that's great and all, but these are not committable offers. Yeah. You know, you level off and, you know, you stop growing, getting bigger and better you know, this offer is going to evaporate. So it was nice to have an offer, but, you know, you have to be realistic as a parent and say, guys, these are non-committable offers. you got a long way to go. So it was really, you know, when he started getting through that sophomore year and you saw him starting to fill out, uh, but he played, he didn't really get to show off his athleticism because they had a D1 tight end. So they had him at left tackle, which he, sorry, Skeen, he absolutely hated. Uh, (laughs) You know, until that guy left, Aiden's senior year, he, Aiden, you know, his last year got to play tight end, which he, which he loved because he obviously he thinks he's a wide receiver, but clearly he's not. Right. Um, 
So, you know, but that really started to show people what kind of an athlete he was. You saw his drive, you saw his motor. And that's one of these things that, uh, not to get way off track, but when Aiden hears draft analysts talk about his motor and that's what they lead with, that pisses them off. Because really? that's kind of how you describe a kid who's, you know, not maybe not quite good enough, but compensates for their motor. And right. he views himself as, I'm good enough and I have a motor. So, yeah. you know, he really wants that out. And I think this year and then, you know, whenever he makes it to the combine, I think you're going to see that out of him that, you know, he may be 6'6", 269 pounds, but, you know, he's going to run there with, you know, he might not run a 4'5", but he'll not be far off from that. Yeah, and I remember the first wow moment, I think it was his freshman year, he reads a screen pass and he goes backwards. He stops on the dime, goes backwards, gets up with that vertical and knocks down a pass. And I think that's when everybody was like, okay, this kid isn't sneaky athletic, you know, <laughs> this kid right. is, a, is an athlete. So, Skeen, when do you remember seeing him on play? Do you remember on film and do you remember talking to Hutch about him and saying, okay, because I remember him asking for your opinion and what were your first thoughts about him? Yeah, I remember Aiden when he was in the seventh or eighth grade at one of the camps mm -hmm. in Arbor and, and watching him and, and we're wondering and, and dreaming about what he was going to turn it out to be. And uh, we knew there was potential there. We just had no idea that the skeleton was going to blow up to be six, six. Yeah. And when that happened and you combine the other athleticism that clearly he got from his mother, then you know oh, yeah. that, that, that <laughs> the kid was going to be a good football player. So uh, the rest is kind of history when we look at that. I, I was just going to make a comment. You know, one thing that, that is an indicator to me, you know, Hutch is talking about offers and committable offers and, and the, the guidance, just the parental guidance that Aiden has received and why we talk about the character of this young man and why he's a leader and doing the things he's doing and what he wants to do. You heard it right there in the way Hutch described it. In the recruiting process, there was a lot of humility. There's a lot of gratitude and a lot of appreciation for the situation that this young man is in. And of course, he's got a, he's got a superstar dad who's been there, done that on the football field in Ann Arbor, but is still leading to this day. And I think that's, should need, that needs to be highlighted and pointed out that one of the reasons this kid is a good football player is because he's surrounded by good people. And that's another reason why he's, he's, his, his trajectory is, is, is upward in a big way. But you know, we we had we I remember those those questions. We we wondered, you know, what's he going to turn out to be? What you know, what's his physical uh, capacity going to be? But it came on strong, and just like you know, Hutch was describing, looking back and comparing these offers and these other stars and these other kids, it was evident. I think by the time he was a sophomore, what freshman or sophomore in high school, there's a lot of growth here, and this one's going to be a special player. And having Kurt Mallory uh, to talk to you about that, I imagine would have been great too. This guy's been coaching forever, and I would imagine that he was honest. I know that he was honest with Nathan, Doug's Doug's son, who was recruited by yeah. Wyoming and some others, and decided to stay in state. Uh, but how important was that, Hutch, to get that kind of stamp of approval from a guy that you that you trust like that? And just like all the guys from our class, I mean, I, I reach out to these guys because I don't want you know to get sugar coated. And Kurt, you know. Said it like he was, you know, the kid's got a good frame. If he can run sideline to sideline, he's going to have opportunities. And that's pretty much how, how it ran out. Uh, but I think, you know, like Doug says, just to expound on that, you get some of these kids that get certain people in their ears and they, you know, they're going to be the next, uh, you know, Johnny Unitas. And, and you're like, no, you're not. you got a long yeah. way to go. Not enough people in a lot of these kids' ears that are saying to them, listen, this comes with hard work. You're not going to just walk on the field and be a five-star and be the next first-round draft pick. This stuff comes to, to those who achieve it. I mean, certainly there's some freak athletes out there, but everybody thinks they're the freak athlete, and they're not. Uh, and, you know, this is a game of football. It's not about being an athlete. I mean, athlete is a component of it, but you have to be a football player. And you also have to be an athlete to play outside linebacker at that size, and that's kind of what he's doing now. Has he talked to you about that? Is he pretty excited about standing up a little bit more? And uh, he's going to garner a lot of attention this year, and you and I talked about that earlier. It's going to be one of those things where he's going to be have a couple guys on him, but really seems like this position fits him pretty well. Yeah, he has never dropped before other than like a little zone blitz to sort of uh, get underneath. But I, I think playing tight end in high school will help him with a little bit of that. And then actually, because McDonald wouldn't let him do everything in practice, he played all linebacker positions up front on seven on seven. 
for skeletons. So he <laughs> learned to drop as a middle linebacker, learned to drop as an outside linebacker, the, uh, the opposite position. So he got really indoctrinated into what McDowell wants and sort of, you know, what is, I mean, they're not going to ask him to do a ton. I mean, uh, but what they're going to ask him to do, I've seen him cover our tight ends 25 yards downfield and there's no separation there. Uh, you know, is he going to be in man coverage a lot? No. Uh, is he going to cover the flat, the curl? Absolutely. Uh, but, you know, like when I talked to McDonald earlier, he's like, our job is to, you know, put our best pass rusher in the best, best position it is to win. And, you know, you're going to be put in positions where Aiden's going to have to drop. And that's that's fine. He's ready for the challenge. Uh, but they would prefer him to be, you know, hand in the dirt and getting around the edge and making things happen that way. Yeah, no doubt. And I was going to ask you about Mike McDonald. Seems like he's made a pretty good first impression on these kids. And you, I would imagine, you like what you've seen? Absolutely. I finally uh, met him this summer at Harbaugh's house. There was a recruiting, uh, uh, the, the barbecue that he had at his house. Uh, they had a, one of the kids came in who was interested in med school. So I went and talk, talked to the parents. And I finally got to uh, talk to Mac. And, I mean, Aiden has had nothing but great things. Uh, it's, it's interesting. Aiden says, our practices during spring have never been like this before. There's been so much energy, so much fun. Um, you know, I'm hoping that translates uh, onto the field. I mean, Mac is uh, really excited about Aiden because, you know, Aiden's doing everything that he's supposed to do. And uh, obviously, I think Aiden has talked about it, that when Mac finally told him that he wasn't going to be fully released for spring ball, even though he was medically released, uh, they got into a small kerfuffle. Uh, Aiden was pretty <laughs> upset with them because Aiden had circled on his calendar March 11th. That's my go day. And yep. he got went and saw the doctor, got cleared. He's putting all his pads on, getting all taped up, ready to go. And McDonald comes out during, just does a drive-by right before practice and says, yeah, you're not doing everything. And yep. Aiden had his jaw hit the ground and you know, gave him a nasty look and McDonald said, if you want to fight somebody, fight me. I'm one that made this call. And you can't really like, you know, go after your defensive coordinator. So he just had to bite his tongue and call me after practice and say how pissed he was. And they've had words about it. And I, you know, as a coach, that's what you want. Uh, you want your, your captain to go out there and be upset that you're not going to let him play. But I yeah. think that's just a testament to, to Aiden. He wanted and, to play. He wanted to be out there. I mean, they let him do a little bit more. They let him do one-on-one -on -one pass rush. They let him do some sort of half-line stuff. But they didn't want some overzealous, you know, freshman, you know, dive at his ankles for no reason in March. So, you know, Aiden got the experience of playing all the positions up front from a linebacker's perspective and got that feel for the game for what it looks like to – not have your hand down and see in the backfield and have the disadvantage that he has since your hand isn't in the ground and now you're six foot six, you've got to learn to recenter yourself and get low again. And so that yeah. was, you know, something he had to work on. Uh, my biggest concern was how he was going to manage getting off the ball. Cause I thought his get off last year uh, for when he was in there, uh, it was, it was getting really, it was getting pretty high level. And I was curious to see, from a two-point stance, how he because I hated two-point stances and I had to play that the second half of my my senior year. Uh, but he does a great job. I mean, pretty much he's going to be in a two-point stance, first and second down, any third down, obvious passing uh, downs, he's going to put his hand down. Yeah, and he's back to full strength. Hundred percent. Oh yeah, yeah. He's uh, his ankle. You know, they haven't measured it in a while. He was one or two degrees off from some of the range of motion, but. It doesn't bother him. There's the swelling's gone. We've done some extra work there. Um, he doesn't notice it at all. He does, you know, everything. He's passed all his conditioning tests. You know, I, I wouldn't say with ease because I saw his face on some of the pictures. He was struggling with it. But, you know, he's the heaviest guy, you know, of the linebacker group running out there. So, but he met all his conditioning drills. So he's, he's good to go. Yeah, it doesn't hurt to have a dad as a doctor when uh, when you're rehabbing. So I was going to say Mike McDonald's got some pipes too, man. If he was going to fight him, he might have been in for a scrap, man. That guy, that guy looks pretty well, good. He's a short fella now. I mean, his, he his reach is going to be his, his limitation. 
hey, let's let's not uh, let's not judge here, you know. <laughs> so, Dean, you and I talked, man, many years ago um, about how you felt better that with Michigan men in the building coaching these guys, and when Mallory was there and came back, and um, with Aiden Hutchinson, I've always thought, man. I see the look on his face like after the Wisconsin game a couple of years ago, Hutch, and I'm like, this is a guy who's just devastated by this. And frankly, uh, fair or not, it looked like other guys were like, well, you know, dug on it, we lost. But uh, it looked like he took it personally. And to me, that really helps with the culture, which obviously needs to be rebuilt uh, from last year. There was something off there. I don't think anybody would disagree with that. But to you, Skeen, am I right here in thinking that a guy who played – Whose, whose dad played here and who had the Michigan stuff on his walls and everything and who cares so much. Uh, to me, having a guy like that as a captain uh, means a hell of a lot. Yeah, it means, it means a ton. So, you know, this kid's grown up around all of this, lived in the household with, you know, these these five championship rings on display and, and everything else that goes along with it. And like any competitive young man, he wants to do better than his dad. You know, my son's the same. My daughters are the same. That's what kids want to do. They want to beat you. And so if you mix in a little bit of that competitiveness and then a healthy dose of God-given athletic talent and then an ability to work your tail off, you got something that can become a great leader. And that's what we all expect of Aiden this fall. I know Chris expects that, and we all know Aiden expects that of himself. Jim Harbaugh and his staff expect that of him, and we're all just anxiously waiting to see it happen. And I'll be right there glued to the television, hoping to see the best of, of what this kid's really capable of doing on full display. So it's something to look forward to. And what are we, six, eight weeks away from seeing it? So I can't wait. Yeah, I can't either. And the last thing I'm going to ask you guys, in case Hutch gets called in here, I know you're on call, Hutch, and really appreciate you taking the time. But uh, you talk about kerfuffles. Well, first things first, you talk about the Stanley or the uh, – Big Ten rings being on display. We know that Hutch treats his like the Stanley Cup. You know, you're never, not sure if Aiden's going to have one at the bottom of a lake somewhere, apparently. So, but uh, but you talked about kerfuffles. Did you guys ever get into it? Uh, can you remember when? Because uh, I know that the offensive lineman and the defensive lineman, you said every now and then, it'd just be a full on brawl sometime, and and Everett would be like, "Hey, man, let's go." Do you remember you guys? Do you two ever getting into it? I don't remember any specifics of me smashing Hutch's head into the ground uh, out of frustration. I, I remember, I remember plenty of times where I wanted to, but but I don't think Hutch, I don't think you and I had that kind of uh, that kind of on the field practice relationship. I, Everett Everett and Kakuza and I, we we had our energies focused on some other people rather than you uh, for a couple reasons. It was more fun screwing with other guys other than Hutch because Hutch didn't react to Everett's mouth and the stupid things he was saying like some of the other defensive linemen did. And it was more fun just, just beating the crap out of other guys. And uh, Hutch was our, st our star defensive lineman. So the coaching staff would not be too happy if we were all ganging up trying to crush uh, Hutch. So we wanted to keep him upright because we knew how important he was. But there were some other younger guys that we found – high levels of entertainment with screwing with all day long in the practice field. <laughs> were those guys as nasty hutch as, as Skeen always talks about? No, they were they I mean they were what offensive linemen should be. This is the, the drive through the whistle and then during practice, you know, there's some extracurricular activity. And that's you know, that's what practice is about and that's what making each other tough and having competition and that's what it's all about. I mean I did the same things to the to the other guys, you know, the when the we'd go against the second team guys. I mean, my job was to execute what I needed to execute and then at the same time I'm I'm trying to make the backup better. And so if that means, you know, pushing him harder and doing some things I might not necessarily do in the game just to, you know, give him a little extra business, hey, that's what it's done. I mean, this is what this game is about. This is not, you know, you, there is some finesse to the game, but it, when you get down in the trenches, it's ugly, you know, put your shovel in the ground sort of work. And, and it's that's just how it is. It's always going to be like that. Yeah. And hopefully it's that way today. And, and in going into the fall, man, with this team, uh, I got a feeling that uh, you're going to see a little bit different culture. I think you're going to see great leadership. I don't think there's any question about that. Hutch, I appreciate it. Chris Hutchinson, Doug Skeen, thanks for your time, fellas. I hope we can do it again maybe during the season. I uh, really can't tell you how much we appreciate it. So uh, best of luck to your boy. We're expecting big things, and I know we're going to get it. Yep, thanks a lot. You bet. Thanks, Ballas. Go Blue.